Well, good morning. Good morning. Um, thank you all for uh, for being here today. Thank you for uh, allowing me to join you from the great city of San Diego with all of my friends up here in uh, in Los Angeles. Thank you, USC, uh, for hosting us. Thank you, Governor Schwarzenegger, for your leadership and for really gathering, I think, a great cross-section, a bipartisan cross-section of Californians to talk about what is our state's number one issue. Homelessness is not an issue in California. It is the issue. Uh, and of course, we are all here today to discuss the policies, the practices, and most importantly, the actions that we can take to reduce the number of homeless men, women, and children who are living without a home. One goal. How do we get people off the street and into housing? Um, but before I talk about some of the solutions and some of the things that uh, we've learned the hard way in San Diego uh, and some of the experiences that we've done, I thought I would um, tell you a story, a story about someone who affected me and affected how I, uh, as mayor, look at this issue. It began one afternoon outside an apartment complex in the heart of San Diego, right in Mission Valley. I was there to, to see someone who I'd heard about, um, but I'd never met. His name was Brian, and I vividly remember it. I remember standing in the hot concrete, and I saw him walk up to me. Uh, he was smiling from ear to ear, wearing a very crisp gray dress shirt, and he exudes the confidence of what you would expect from a Navy veteran. What I don't expect is what he tells me next. Thank you. He says, thank you for cleaning up all the tents under the freeway. I've heard that from residents and business owners, but never from someone like Brian, because the tents that Brian was talking about are where he used to live. It's where he did meth. It's where he bathed himself outdoors. It's where his jaw was shattered by a vicious assault. And it's where he finally began his journey to a permanent home. Drugs have always been a big part of my life, he tells me. They were a habit that I couldn't break. And eventually, they became more important to Brian than keeping a roof over his head. Brian knew that his life was in danger. Yet as time wore on, he convinced himself he was satisfied living on the streets because it meant he didn't have to confront his addiction. And one day, an officer from our neighborhood policing division approached him and offered him help with the shelter bed. And at first, he hated the idea of going to one of our new bridge to housing shelters. It took some convincing. But once their case managers connected him to veterans benefits he didn't know he had and supported him until he was housed in a former motel that we transformed into apartments for homeless veterans. Today, Brian lives there. He's sober. And he's an example for others who are looking to do the same. And as we stood outside his apartment, appreciating the garden that he had just planted for everybody there, he tells me he would still be living underneath the freeway if he wasn't compelled to move to a shelter. He couldn't change the situation for himself. We had to help him make that change. I firmly believe that Brian's story is our story. It's the story of every city that's struggling with homelessness. And a few years ago, Brian's journey wouldn't have been possible because most everyone in California turned a blind eye to homelessness. It was always someone else's problem to fix. Then a hepatitis A outbreak hit San Diego County, and it became everyone's problem. Public health officials said they were doing everything by the book, but people were dying and things weren't getting better. I knew we needed a change. So I had to take a good hard look in the mirror. Our whole region needed to do more on homelessness. I needed to do more. We had been taking the same old approach as every other city, an approach where everyone agrees we need to help homeless individuals. But when it comes to actually doing something, there was always an excuse standing in the way. And when county doctors told us the outbreak, the outbreak had no end in sight, it was clear that the time for excuses was over. This was the moment that I vowed that as long as I'm mayor, 
We would do the right thing over the popular thing. We would stand tall even if we had to stand alone. We would begin a new normal, a massive adjustment in resources, responsibilities, and I think most importantly, attitudes. We deployed nurses and paramedics to every riverbed, canyon, and street corner and vaccinated more than 100,000 people. We started a robust campaign to educate the public. We began sanitizing our streets and sidewalks. And I took all of those homeless ideas that we were debating and threw away the excuses and put the solutions into action. We opened four new bridge shelters, and I picked every site myself. I said, if you don't like the site, blame me. I'm mayor. We expanded safe parking lots and storage centers. We reduced encampments in the San Diego River by 90%. We removed more than 4,000 tons of trash from sidewalks, parks, and public spaces. And we launched the largest expansion of homeless services in our city's history. We changed virtually everything. And by doing that, we've changed lives as a result. San Diego is the only major county in California where homelessness went down last year instead of up. We still have an incredible amount of work to do. But I think one of the reasons that we've seen a change is because San Diego no longer accepts a sidewalk, a riverbed, or a tarp as a home. And it is troubling to see other cities now grappling with public health scares of their own. My mayoral colleagues across the state are seeing rare diseases make a comeback in homeless encampments. Different cities, different leadership, but same crisis. This isn't just a coincidence. These are the clear consequences of a larger government failure. Unsanitary encampments in cities big and small. A deficient mental health system, which we just heard a great deal about. Overwhelmed emergency rooms. Laws that embolden drug abuse. California, as I say often, has lost its way on homelessness. And it's up to us, all of us, to find that moral compass again because, as Governor Schwarzenegger said so aptly this morning, these are people we are talking about. And I believe that we have to be honest with ourselves about why so many people are living on the street. We have to speak the truth about what causes homelessness no matter how uncomfortable it is. And we must have the courage to enact the solutions to fix it. I'll be blunt. I believe many academic theories on solving homelessness are inadequate for the scope and the scale of our state's crisis. Many people say that we should only focus on housing to solve homelessness. It's a fine idea, but yet as we've discussed this morning, the fact that it can take years to build one home let alone 151,000 for every homeless person in California. This housing only ideology also ignores that tens of thousands of Californians aren't homeless because they lost a home. They are homeless because they are losing their fight with mental illness or addiction. So until we get the statewide housing reforms that we desperately need, and we heard a lot about this morning, we must find more solutions for the most challenging part of the homeless population that we are dealing with in every city. People who are suffering from a substance abuse problem, a mental health issue, or both. In San Diego, 50,000 emergency calls come in each year for people with schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, or other crippling afflictions. And that, of course, diverts public safety resources away from crimes and other emergencies. And this is not just happening in San Diego. This is playing out across cities across California. We can't allow this to continue because we are talking about someone who's somebody's brother, sister, mother or father, son or daughter. They need our help now, not three and five years from now. Last month, the city and the county of San Diego began a partnership to deploy mental health teams to all of the bridge shelters that we have stood up in San Diego. It's a place where people with severe addiction and to, and to help place people with severe addiction in residential care and follow it up with significant increase in county resources to make sure everyone who is struggling with addiction and mental illness 
is directly connected to housing and treatment. As I said earlier, that's absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. And as I said earlier, we all need to do more on homelessness. And part of that means cities and counties must break down the bureaucratic silos and work together as a team. So in San Diego, we're also launching a public-private partnership to open the county's first bridge shelter to support those with mental health efforts. These actions are going to provide a powerful resource for our emergency first responders, a reassurance for families afraid to walk certain streets, and a beacon of hope for the men and women that are on those streets, and an acknowledgement that to lead on homelessness, we must lead on mental health. So glad to hear the comments of my friend and colleague, Mayor Steinberg, who's absolutely been leading and continues to lead on that. Because for our cities to turn the corner on homelessness, we also need to fix state laws. And I'll be very direct. These were laws that eliminated our ability to effectively respond to this crisis. Laws that cities once relied on to encourage people to accept treatment or a shelter bed instead of a jail bed. We just talked about Prop 47, which was, so, which was advertised back in the days, the quote, Safe Neighborhoods and Schools Act. And it turned cocaine, heroin, and methamphetamine into a slap on the wrist. And then Prop 57, labeled, quote, the Public Safety and Rehabilitation Act, doubled down on this approach. If you think someone who is addicted to drugs and sleeping in a canyon is going to turn their life around without an intervention, you're not being honest. These are cries for help. And folks are not going to change without consequences for their actions. And some of the ideas behind these laws were well-intentioned, but they need to be changed. And that's why I'll be working to support efforts in 2020 and beyond to make sure our state's laws actually fulfill their stated purpose that we've been talking about this morning, to rehabilitate lives, make a change, and to keep neighborhoods safe, and getting those who need treatment into treatment, not a jail bed. It's what voters were promised, and it's what voters deserve. And we need to do even more. I recently launched the Rebuilding the California Dream. This is a group that will support state and local ballot measures that decrease homelessness, increase public safety, grow the economy, and clean up public spaces and the environment. And as part of these efforts, I'm building a coalition to craft a 2022 statewide initiative that brings solutions to our homeless crisis directly to California voters for action. We're at the first stages of this effort, working with experts, conducting research, and assembling a grassroots movement. I couldn't be excited, more excited to work with many of you who are in this room this morning. Thank you for your efforts and thank you for coming together. But I'd like to conclude by stating the obvious. It's an election year and we're going to hear, be hearing a lot about these issues. My name won't be on the ballot so I can say whatever I want. <laughs> and what I'm talking about today is obvious to almost anyone walking on our streets but considered politically incorrect by many insiders. These are ideas that most people in power actually believe in, but are afraid to say, let alone do. Drug laws that hurt people, tragic mental illness, public health scares, a historic housing shortage. They all must be addressed to solve the homeless crisis. They all affect cities across California, and they are all consequences of a larger government failure. It's time to get real about these problems. That's why we're here today. It's not acceptable to condone living outdoors in urban areas. It's not humane to let people with severe mental illness wander our streets. And it's not responsible to turn a blind eye to drug abuse. It's time to clean up the unsafe homeless encampments that have far too long symbolized our state's failure to act. And to anyone who says it's not compassionate to move a person off the street, my friends, I say it's not compassionate to let a person die on it. Californians are tired of settling for incremental change. 
That's why we're here. And the fact that you're all here proves that right now. We need and we deserve bold action that produces tangible results and compels the government to act. We want to get behind ideas that don't just sound good or feel good, but they actually work. So I enjoy, invite you to join these efforts as we help to rebuild the California dream, for the housed, for the homeless, for all of us. That's why this morning is so important. That's the action that we need. Thank you for allowing me to share some of our experience in San Diego. Thank you.